What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and I have unfortunately sat through every episode of Disney Marvel's newest slop fest in the form of Echo. I watched it so you don't have to, dear viewer, and good lord, was it something to witness. Beyond my review of this show, I also wanted to touch on how The Hollywood Reporter attempted to use a racism narrative in order to prop up Echo in order to garner support, but I'll get into that story later. Also, I should say this review will be full of spoilers, but to be honest, what happens here is not going to change the MCU or anything close to that. Also, for footage, besides some still images, I'll just throw some Marvel-esque gameplay on screen while I rant. Because if I use any footage of Echo, Disney will send their Gestapo to my house and probably kidnap me for copyright issues. Cool? Alright, well, let's talk about Echo. I want to first start out by saying that Echo was completely advertised in a misleading manner. It promotes itself as this gritty, dark crime drama, but ends up being nothing close to this whatsoever. All the scenes you saw in a trailer showing Echo in dark, seedy rooms fighting people or dudes getting shot, I am not kidding you. These all happen in the first episode within the span of 10 to 15 minutes of screen time. Beyond this, the majority of the show is just Echo and people from her past, largely just civilians she grew up with, talking about how they missed each other. This show could have been a very interesting and dark crime thriller, but it ends up being nothing close to that potential. The worst parts about Echo is how baffling it all feels, and that the show doesn't seem to have a clue as to what it wants to be. The actual plot of the show is bare bones, and that's putting it mildly. Basically, Echo shoots Kingpin and Hawkeye, which was also a bad show, and then decides to return home to Alabama in order to connect to her roots. Kingpin obviously isn't dead and eventually wants to get Echo, or I guess Maya Lopez, which is her actual name, since she's never really referred to as Echo even once in the show. There's no real interesting conflict or character study here at all. And it just ends up feeling like a show that was made by people who had little experience in the entertainment medium, and barely feels like it's tied to the MCU in any tangible way. For a show about a trained assassin of the Kingpin, I can't believe this is true, but I am not lying to you. The show only has three full-blown fight scenes in its five-episode run. The first is this battle between Kingpin's goons, Echo, and random criminals. This fight ends up being one of only two moments in the show where I actually perked up in my seat, and it was obviously because Charlie Cox's Daredevil shows up to steal the show. Daredevil is badass in the scene, and unfortunately, he's only in the show for a total of 98 seconds. If you saw the leaked Echo vs. Daredevil fight, that's it. That's all he's in the show for. You never see him again, nor is Daredevil ever mentioned. He shows up because Echo and Kingpin's goons killed the other criminals and Daredevil was tailing those criminals back to their hideout. So naturally, Daredevil fights Echo and literally just disappears suddenly and that's it. And of course, Marvel heavily used those 98 seconds of footage in their promotion of the show. Because they knew that nobody would give any shits about this abomination unless there was a hook. And that's it. Daredevil shows up once and never again. It's such a shame, and if Marvel was smart, which these days that seems impossible, they would have interwoven Daredevil into Echo's story more in order to garner actual interest. But the problem here is that the show quickly abandons New York for the sunny side quiet of Alabama. And because of this, a lot of the scenes are just people talking in houses or shops. There's not really anything interesting, and it all just kind of blends together. Echo would have been immensely better had it just been a gritty crime drama set within New York City where Echo was hunting the Kingpin because you could have had characters like Daredevil or even Jessica Jones crossing paths with her. But instead, Echo's supporting cast go from a cousin named Biscuits, which I'm not kidding, that's his name, to Echo's grandmother who resents her because she reminds the grandma of Echo's dad who gets killed by Hawkeye in that other show. Honestly. This entire thing just feels misguided and a complete waste of time and potential. And then of course, there's the massive change to Echo's character, which I personally believe to be a garbage pandering, almost borderline racist change that actually ruins her character and makes her far less interesting. 
So the show is five episodes long, and every episode is named after one of Echo's ancestors. Of course, every ancestor listed is a strong, powerful woman, because this is the MCU. But what's insane is that this show opens up with what I can only describe as a Guardians of the Galaxy-esque sequence, where we see a group of people who look like they're made of wood, like Groot or something and they're mystical humanoids with undisclosed powers and then they drink blue Gatorade juice from the trunk of a tree. And then the entire area collapses upon these tree folk and they emerge from the ground as their wooden-like skin falls off and they are suddenly now native people. Then we see the palms of this goddess leader of these native people glow and it's confirmed that Echo, as in Maya Lopez, is the long descendant of this tree native humanoid goddess woman. And then we see sequences in other episodes where Maya's ancestors girl boss their way in different eras of Native American history. One as a young native girl shooting white men with guns like she's in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Another has an ancestor fighting in a sport in order to not be exiled. But regardless, all of these women and Maya are connected through this magical bullshit wooden goddess humanoid I don't even know how else to describe it person. And you see it's a problem because Echo in the comics is just a trained assassin who can mimic the movements of her enemy. This may seem weak in some people's eyes, I mean the creators of the Disney Plus series even called her original powers lame, which is ridiculous. But anyway, within the confines of the street level Marvel Universe where Echo largely operates within, her power set is actually very dangerous and strong. Most street-level scenarios with characters like Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones, and so on, these altercations with them or criminals in general often happen usually in dark, seedy, underbelly, close-quarters combat scenarios. So having a character like Echo, who can mimic and predict the movements of her enemy, are insanely strong and effective within that environment. It's sort of like how I find Bullseye to be one of the scariest Marvel villains ever. Sure, Bullseye probably can't fight someone like Silver Surfer or something. But within the confines of a street-level world, a man who never misses his shot and can use anything as a projectile weapon to hit you? That's terrifying. It's why when Daredevil fights Bullseye in the Netflix series, whenever Daredevil is at range, he's in serious danger. And that's how I see Echo's original concept to be. She's like Bullseye, a trained assassin who within close quarters is just as terrifying as someone like Daredevil or anyone else really. And that's also why her name is Echo, because she echoes her enemy's movement, sort of like the Avengers villain Taskmaster. But here in the Disney Plus series, Echo instead fits into the worst category of MCU misfires in my opinion, which is the strong magical bullshit character tier list where powers are never clearly defined and they keep changing to fit whatever narrative they need to at any moment. You see, unlike her comic's counterpart, the MCU version of Echo instead is more akin to someone like Gaia in Secret Invasion. The idea here is that the women of Maya Lopez's bloodline have magical bullshit powers that stem from that wooden goddess lady we saw in the beginning of the show. The powers, like I said, are not clearly defined either as at one point, Maya gets her fake leg stuck in a train gear and manages to create vibrations that allow her leg to get set free. And then she never uses that power ever again. We also see a flashback sequence that Maya's mom, who also has this power, can use her hands to heal a bird that Maya hit with a rock by using these magical healing powers. Yet Maya never uses this power herself, which would have come in handy when her dad was dying in her arms, but whatever, I guess. Another power that Maya can do is when she faces off against Kingpin in the finale. While surrounded by her ancestors, who are each echoing their powers to Maya, yes, that's the justification these morons came up with when tying her alias to her magical new powers. She can echo her ancestors, and each ancestor has their own abilities that magically just happen. If I remember correctly, the one ancestor girl who just Tarantino's a bunch of white guys with a gun, she uses her powers and basically becomes Bullseye. And she never misses a shot and kills every white man with her girl bossness. And like I said, in that final fight scene, which is one of three fight scenes in the entire show, mind you, Echo uh, echoes her power somehow to her captive grandma and sister cousin, and those two are able to defeat Kingpin's male goons by echoing their ancestors' movements. 
a maybe 100 pound 75 year old grandmother who looks like she'd die if she took a sip of McDonald's Sprite is somehow able to overcome multiple kingpin goons via the magical nonsense of her ancestors. This show is garbage, but it gets worse. You see, Echo defeats Kingpin in a barn by placing her hands on Kingpin's face. And her hands then glow and yet again another magical bullshit power manifests. This time Echo is suddenly able to transfer herself and Kingpin into Kingpin's past within his mind. Then she urges him to let go of his pain and again this power after this moment is never used again. Also Kingpin doesn't die, he just leaves Echo behind and then flies back to New York. There's no consequences or stakes in the story and it massively wastes the presence of Kingpin again, this is like twice now that Disney Plus has ruined it. What I really hate about this new Echo power nonsense though is that like I said there's no clearly defined power set. The reason why I love Spider-Man or Daredevil is because you have a very good understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. Spider-Man has super strength, agility, and stuff like his spidey sense. We know that Peter can't magically out of nowhere just start flying or time traveling for no reason. We love Daredevil because it's confirmed that he has super senses, but he's not super strong. Daredevil couldn't for example go punch for punch with someone like the Hulk. But we understand that Daredevil likely would have an easy time dodging attacks because his senses allow him to triangulate and anticipate his enemy's movements. What separates this bullshit version of Echo or characters like Gaia or Captain Marvel even who also displays this level of nonsense power scaling is that there's no defined rule set to go by here. And that doesn't come across as exciting but more so that these characters are so powerful that it makes their stories incredibly uninteresting. The idea of a magical wooden goddess woman channeling her ancestors through her hands fighting criminals in New York City is ridiculous. And it just feels wrong and out of place, not to mention that the outfit that Echo dons in the MCU. They unironically gave her a suit of Native American body armor with the symbology and everything. Which yet again, like I said, it feels completely out of place for a character like this. Imagining her fighting crime in New York City running around in that outfit is just, it's a parody dude, you can't be serious. They could have easily have just given her the comic accurate outfit, not to mention earlier in the show they proved that they already translated her outfit from the comics well enough anyway. Just put the Echo logo on her jacket or give her some black body armor with the symbol, that's all she really needs. We don't need her running around like a Native American sponsored athlete. It looks so out of place and it's ridiculous. Then of course there's the big can of worms that'll divide people which is ASL or American Sign Language. Look I understand why it's here and yes Echo even in the comics is a deaf character as well. But like Daredevil, Echo's unique power set was designed to overcome and position her in a way that her disability didn't hold her back per se. Like Daredevil is blind but his super senses are effectively his form of sight and this makes him very interesting. The comics version of Echo is deaf, however her ability to mimic any movement meant that her eyesight became her greatest weapon. She's the opposite of Daredevil, his hearing is his trump card. So because Echo can see but not hear, she can anticipate any movement coming her way and that's what makes her deadly. Then comes the whole ASL thing because Echo can read any movement, naturally this would mean she can also read lips and body language perfectly as well. Meaning, technically speaking, Echo wouldn't really need to rely on ASL constantly in order to communicate, cause her powers would allow her to function normally anyway, so when actors in the show are all signing in order to talk, it kind of forgets what makes Echo, well, Echo really. And not only that, but there are many scenes where two actors just stand there signing to each other and there's no spoken words. Which may seem cool to some, but within the framework of a television show which is a visual and audio medium, this does nothing but hamper the show's pacing. I'm fine if Echo uses ASL sparingly at times, but the extent that it's used here is just way too much. And it threatens the pacing of the television show, and I understand that they wanted this show to be this big pandering thing to deaf people. But we have to admit that this is a show first and it simply doesn't work here. I'm sure I'll get blowback for that but let's say in the future when Echo is fighting alongside Daredevil, Spider-Man and more against Kingpin, I don't need Spider-Man to suddenly start using ASL to talk to her. In fact, because of her power set, Echo could read Daredevil or Jessica Jones lips just fine and she could use ASL or hand signs in general for dramatic or comedic effect. 
I think it would be funny for Spider-Man and Echo to annoy each other in the MCU. Cause Spider-Man wears a mask, so when he speaks to her, you could have Echo looking confused cause his mask is blocking his lips. And you could have funny moments where Echo thinks Spider-Man is insulting her, but it's just a miscommunication. And then you have someone like Daredevil or Jessica Jones being the mediator between the two as Spidey and Echo misinterpret each other constantly. That would be fun to see. But if I have to watch scenes constantly where everyone is signing in some eventual team up, it's just going to slow the pace of the show down and it'll feel unnecessary. She can mimic movements. She can easily read lips and body language. Plus, it would make her far more charming to use ASL when it's actually needed. But like I said already, this entire show feels like a misfire and a waste of massive potential. It should have been The Sopranos meets Daredevil, a brutally dark crime drama about the lengths Maya will go to in order to hunt down the Kingpin. And how the rage and distrust she feels being used by him as a weapon has led her down a path to become one of the MCU's shining examples of a brooding anti-hero. A female Punisher, if you will, but instead we get a show where not much of anything happens. And the stakes nor the eventual aftermath mean anything, as Kingpin just largely abandons Echo and just goes back to New York City. And in a post credit scene while on a plane, Kingpin sees a TV as news anchors demand that NYC needs a mayor willing to fight for them. Which obviously this inspires Kingpin to become the mayor of New York like he did in the comics. Which is a great idea for an ongoing story, and it also confirms the leaks that we heard already too that Kingpin's Devil Saga will be happening and will bring together street-level heroes into their own Avengers-like team to face him. But the problem here is that both iterations of Kingpin within the MCU so far, which is Hawkeye and Echo, have made the character feel more like a bitch than anything else. I mean, Kate Bishop launches Kingpin through a window and there's absolutely zero repercussions for this. Echo shoots Kingpin in the face, kills his goons, humiliates him, and then uses her magical goddess nonsense powers to travel into his mind and confront him. Yet there are no repercussions. None of her immediate family or anything is punished or killed because of this. Instead, Kingpin just leaves Maya and lets her live her own life, and it's stupid. This is the same Kingpin apparently because the Netflix series is now considered canon, that was so scary that if you remember back in Daredevil Season 1, if you even mentioned Kingpin's name, your entire family would be wiped off the map. Remember when Daredevil is trying to get Kingpin's name out of one of those criminals' mouths, and when he tells Daredevil, he's so terrified for his actions that he ends himself by stabbing his own body through the fence nearby? That's the same Kingpin as this? Because that Kingpin beheaded a guy with a car door. The same Kingpin who killed his father with a hammer, and made Matt Murdock's life a living hell in season 3 of the Netflix series. Yet here, he feels like nothing more than a neutered version that lacks any of the core fear and power that he's known for. The Disney Plus Kingpin is nothing more than a big evil white man who's a punching bag for the downtrodden and it's pathetic and horrible. This is not my Kingpin is what I'm saying. This is some imposter version of the greatness that once was and is pathetic. All Marvel's Echo has managed to do is ruin everything around it and lessen the brand even more than it already was. Outside of the Daredevil fight and another standout sequence in a roller derby where Echo kills a bunch of dudes in a fight scene, the rest of the show is a meandering waste of time and resources. If this show was a dark drama where Echo is killing people while extracting information from crime bosses and Kingpin is closing in on her, as the people around her pay the price? This show, I'm not kidding you, could have easily have been amazing and a genuine masterpiece. Something akin to Daredevil over at Netflix, it could have been just like that. It could have been great, and I think if Echo was kept within the confines of her original design, and not this mystical goddess bullshit nonsense that they came up with, the character would be far more interesting as well in my opinion. Everyone involved with Echo should be fired and forced to watch the entire Daredevil Netflix series and then write a 1,000 word essay about how sorry they are for screwing this up. This show will do nothing to alleviate concerns over the Disney Marvel brand, and it panders so hard into the Native American angle that it ends up parodying itself and becoming borderline racist by devolving an interesting Native character like Echo and turning her into a superhero whose powers are defined by her Native upbringing. Proving yet again that modern Hollywood sees nothing but skin color and gender identity before the actual qualities and strengths of what makes these characters interesting to begin with. They basically made Echo channel her ancestors like some discount Mortal Kombat Nightwolf. 
It's about as offensive as a character being Buddhist, and then deciding that their power can only be them channeling Buddha because that's how creatively bankrupt and low-key racist these creators are over at Disney Marvel. Like if the same people who made Echo did Daredevil, I kid you not the equivalent would be them seeing that Daredevil is a Catholic and going, oh well his powers must then come from Jesus Christ. He must be able to walk on water and heal people and come back to life when he's crucified because he's Catholic. And since we're all diversity hires anyway, all we can see is the surface level qualities of people. And we're all just morons who've drank liters of woe Kool-Aid like that's how pandering Echo's powers are. It's literally akin to making Daredevil into a holy Jesus Christ wine shooting superhero, I'm not kidding. This shit is horrible dude, it stinks, it's like a plague that holds to your tongue. Echo is not only a terrible show, it is without a shadow of a doubt in my mind the single worst thing Disney Marvel has ever produced thus far. And that includes things like the Marvels or even misfires like Netflix's Iron Fist, which was also not very good either. But Iron Fist is like a masterpiece when compared to the inconsistencies and qualities of Echo's storytelling, and the treatment and authenticity of the comic book character that it's based on. This Echo is equivalent to what Fox did to Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine. It's missing the entire point of what makes a character like Echo or Deadpool cool and instead reduces them to a parody that just feels insulting and horrible. The best thing Disney Marvel could do going forward with Echo is to never speak about it ever again. To completely deny its existence the same way they did the Inhumans TV show, which was made by the same guy who did Netflix's Iron Fist by the way. Echo is such a travesty, it's a horrible misfire that exemplifies all the worst qualities and decisions that have plagued Disney Marvel at a microscopic level. This is the event horizon of pandering woke nonsense, the end point of no return for a brand this damaged and misused. Echo is the worst thing to come out of Disney Marvel yet, and I mean that with no hyperbole. If you have any remote feeling of watching this, I implore you to just save your time. Reject this nonsense and do literally anything else with your time instead. I could have played three and a half hours of Star Ocean 2 Remake, but no. I instead chose to spend my night watching Echo as my girlfriend sat beside me playing Yakuza 0 on her laptop. And she told me she's never seen me look so disgusted and annoyed ever, as she would glance over from time to time to see just how appalled I was. Especially during that final fight scene where Echo mind shifts into Kingpin's fat head. The best course of action for Echo is that Disney Marvel erases this show from Disney Plus and takes the entire show's original footage and places it into a rocket and launches it into the nothingness of cold dead space. But if we did that, we threaten the possibility that an alien race would come across that USB with Echo Season 1 on it, and upon watching it, those aliens would become so appalled by what they just witnessed that they would likely triangulate our position in the universe and descend upon us and wipe us out entirely forever allowing something as horrible as Echo to exist within this timeline. And honestly, if that were to happen, I wouldn't even blame the aliens for what they do to us. This is the worst thing to happen to the MCU ever. And I guess to finish this video, let's quickly look at this clip from The Hollywood Reporter where they speak to an actress who was in Echo and they talk about a racist remark that Grace Randolph said. So let's watch that quickly. I'm wondering if you saw this. There was a journalist that went viral recently um, for suggesting or basically asking if Echo and Kahori both needed to exist within the MCU, which is... Did really ask that? They absolutely did, and it was so egregious. I was just wondering if you had a reaction and, and if you could explain why it's important to have multiple Native characters in a project. I mean, would somebody go up to a white guy and say, like, this is the one perspective for a white story that there is out there? Like, would somebody go and say that? That's that's egregious. That's insane that anybody would say that. I think that, I don't know, I don't even know if it's justifiable of an answer, but I'll give one anyway. Uh, I think that the story of Gahorty in What If is astronomically different than that of Maya Lopez in, in Echo. I think one is of... Uh, one talking about colonization and history and features Mohawk cultures and communities, the community that I come from. And then the other is about a, an anti-hero, kind of like a villain who is coming back to her Choctaw nation and to her family. And, and it's really a, a dark 
crime noir family drama. Um, and so they're both individual stories that absolutely deserve to be told and one that I personally think is badass in, in their own right. I agree there is room for more than one native superhero, but my rebuttal to this is that Echo is not the representation that native audiences deserve. They deserve so much better than this caricature of a story. This is insulting and while yes, native superheroes should exist, for the love of God, not like this. This version of Echo is akin to having a black superhero who channels generations of slavery within their bloodline to become strong. Or they have to eat watermelon and drink grape soda to become faster or something. It's such a pandering move on Marvel's part that they don't realize just how bad it really is. They took a really cool street level superhero and turned her into a walking poster child for woke identity political nonsense. I think I'm done here. I don't want to talk about Echo anymore. This show has left me disillusioned and jaded like never before about the future of Disney Marvel and entertainment in general. Here I thought we were past this, we had evolved as a people to not pander to these lengths. But the truth is that we're only getting started. I hope this video entertained you. I hope my anguish and suffering has led to at least someone out there enjoying their day more than I did while watching this disaster. If Marvel's Echo is a litmus test for the quality of upcoming projects, my friends, we are in for the slop of our lives. So hold on to your butts because 2024 is going to be full of shit and it's about to get nutty. As always, thank you for watching, subscribe, like, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks to my patrons for all their support and have a wonderful day. I hate this show, but we move forward. I'll see you in the next one.